Hey, my name is Jacob Ballard, and this is my video blog for Module 2. One of the key concepts for this module is social construction is the idea, as Thomas Hughes says, that, it's, that social and cultural forces determine technical change, which is a way of saying that it's not like technology just exists and everything just flows and interacts perfectly. There will be people who react to the technology, and there will be things that you realize based on how people use it, because people always find a new way to misuse something, and there will always be some way to improve the technology to meet the needs of society as it evolves and as wants and needs and desires change. The device that I selected, the technology, is an Amazon's Kindle. It's an ebook device, and it would not exist without Michael Hart. He created the first ebook. And what he did, he took the Declaration of Independence and he typed it up. And when he typed it up, the technology was very rudimentary, as in the 70s, early 70s. And it was, he did not have any way to do any cap, not letters that were not capital. So he had all caps, Declaration of Independence. It's the first ebook. And if he hadn't done that, there never would have been an ebook device because there's no ebooks, there's no demand for ebooks because otherwise we're just with books that are traditional paper and there would not be any ebooks demands and uh let's see and when michael hart made the declaration of independence an ebook only six people downloaded it and obviously ebooks have come a lot a long way since then but uh first kindle was put on the market in 2007 and since then there's been a bunch there have been several updates of it there's the uh, there's the kindle 2 the kindle dx the kindle 3 the Kindle Paperwhite first uh, generation and Kindle Paperwhite second generation. There's a Kindle 4 and 5 and 6 and 7. And Kindle Voyage and 7 is more than more recent and Voyage. And each of them exists because people demand something different as the product. They want something different every time. And there's some need that grows in between the years of development of the product. And this is evident in the price also. An example of how human action affects the technology is that Amazon was making these Kindles and at first they were just trying to make it work they had to, and they had to make it work and function. And so for that reason, the it cost $400 at first and then $360 for the second one. And that makes it where only the elite could really afford it, which made, it limits the target audience and makes it inaccessible to most middle class and lower class families, which really hurts how well your sales are. And so to improve that, they had to find a way to continue to improve their product to keep it from declining quality, but also get their price down. And they improved over that considerably because the Kindle 3 only costs $140. And it's the one I actually had. It's a pretty basic one. Uh, you, you have a little bit of Wi-Fi, but you can't really go on. You can't go on and just search anything. You pretty much you go on the Kindle. You can buy stuff for the Kindle, and that's about it. And there's games. And that, but you can't really like you can't do what you can do like on iPad now. And if you wanted, but if you did want the Wi-Fi access in the 3G version of the Kindle 3, it was $190. And that was a way of them saying you want more, you have to pay more. But we're gonna make the cost less so more people can afford it, and that helped make Kindles more popular, which in turn makes ebooks more popular because more people can afford the Kindle, which means that they can afford to buy ebooks too. Because the ebook price doesn't matter if they can't even afford the device to read it on. Another example of how technology is affected by human action is that Kindle Fire 7 has 8 gigabytes of internal storage, and you can get free storage on cloud, uh, unlimited storage on cloud for all Amazon content and photos with fire taken with fire devices, which means that. People didn't just want an ebook device. They wanted to. They want something like an iPad. It had to compete with iPads. So what they did is so you could make it more socially interactive. You can do more things on it to entertain yourself. Play more games. You can go on the internet. You can watch YouTube videos. You can watch movies even. And it just. It's basically. It's all about entertainment now. It's like a multimedia entertainment experience far more than a traditional book. And that's one of the major differences with it. As for how social groups see the Kindle, some social groups like technological determinists, which is most general
public people would see it as an advancement of the e-reader device to the point that it is now basically an iPad but with more enhanced capabilities for specifically e-book reading which means that it's more interactive and it's it, you'd basically admire all the different features that's come to have and that has more storage and that you can take pictures and go on Facebook and play games on it and watch movies and it's just a big source of entertainment it just shows how like it used to be television screens were the big thing and used to be computer screens but now it's getting into Kindles and iPads which are much smaller and portable which is very convenient for traveling as well and another viewpoint on this is like what Kyle Wagner said he said that the first Kindle wasn't the e-reader juggernaut that it is today and he said that in 2011 when the and the Kindle has advanced a lot since then and so basically what you have to keep in mind is that originally the Amazon Kindle cost so much that it was for the wealthier and when they made the original it was very advanced and it had the right materials had the right idea but they did they had to make it cheaper and once they did they made it where the only people who would not have a Kindle are those who hate technology essentially because it has all the features you need for entertainment it's more affordable now it has more features than it did before so Amazon really adjusted their strategy off of the pricing issue and off of how they had to compete with an iPad. Okay, so the Amazon Kindle affecting social relationships. You can use it to be more interactive and communicate with people and to watch a movie with people and talk to people while you're watching the movie. And you can use it where you could watch a movie with somebody where you couldn't before, you used to have to have a television screen or any of that, or laptop, now you don't, you just pull it out, it can be anywhere, and you can just be with your friends watching a movie and talk to them. And one of the main things it does though is that when you're bored, more people are likely to use a Kindle or an iPad or their iPhone to talk or to somebody or to research something or to just play around on Facebook or FaceTime and talk to somebody. And if you FaceTime or something, that does help with your social relationships because you're engaging with more people that you could not otherwise engage with. But at the same time, you miss out on opportunities to talk to strangers who are around you, and that means that you could miss out on meeting people that you could really help. And so in that way, it affects social relationships negatively in some ways, but it's really how much you use it, because some people can use their Kindle towards the end of the day after a hard day at work, and other people are obsessed and have to use it all day. <laughs> and that's important to know, is it's important how long you use it and how you use it. A positive example of how an Amazon Kindle affects social relationships would be like with kids, especially my ne one of my youngest nephews, he used to get in trouble because he's very hyper, and so when he has to wait a long time, he would get very antsy and he would just drive his mother crazy. But now that he has an Am his mother has an Amazon Kindle and lets him play on the Amazon Kindle with games of like Angry Birds and Injustice Gods Among Us and other games like that, he just has a ball and he's good and he behaves. Now sometimes he gets upset when he can't play, <laughs> but when he does play them, he gets in less trouble his mother's less irritated and she doesn't have to discipline him or anything like that because he's not getting as much trouble. So in that way, an Amazon Kindle helps entertain people more, which keeps them from causing trouble sometimes. An article written in 2011 says that ebooks and ebook devices have become more affordable and popular. And because of that, they're now upwards of 20% of the publishing industry. And they said that in 2011, which means that it's obviously increasing throughout. So what that means is that it's become a bigger part of the publishing industry and to the purists they would see it as a threat to the traditional novel. But at the same time, it does, to those who just love storytelling, you could see it as the fact that storytelling is living on through Kindle through Kindles and ebook devices as well as traditional novels. Neither one is taking away storytelling. It's just another form of it. And it's catering more to the new generation, which is good because you need people reading to get more educated and to be informed and to make better decisions to help affect society and humanity, just everyone in general. Turo wrote that the American author is slowly dying due to ebooks, and he said that the Supreme Court is basically allowing ebooks to dominate and publishers and everything to the point that authors are getting less royalties off of ebooks because even though it's cheaper to make an ebook because you don't have to cut down trees to make them and you don't have to do a lot of stuff that made books that make books more expensive to make, authors get less cut. 
of that, which as a aspiring author, that's a little bit worrisome because I don't want ebooks to dominate completely because I would like a sizable amount of royalty. So maybe if the royalties increase, I'd be okay with ebooks dominating. It makes it where the authors who are the content creators are underappreciated and that most do not live like JK Rowling and make a billion dollars, but don't get much of the take of, of the ebooks, which is not really fair because they create the content. If the author never had the idea, you never have the book. And if you don't have the book, there's no ebook. And if you don't have the ebook, there's no point in a Kindle in the first place. They and the actual figures: 25% of an ebook goes to an author according to Toro, but to but a hardback is 50%. So obviously, an author would much rather sell a hardback, have a hardback book bought by a lot of people than an ebook. So that's some of the mentions that authors and ebooks and Kindles would have issues with each other. Okay. So the conflict that between humans and technology that occurs because of the Amazon Kindle, it's important to note that some purists prefer to read books because that's what they grew up with first. I prefer to read books in their traditional form, and I haven't bought an ebook in in a year and a half. Uh, whereas I've had a few books that I've bought recently, but at the same time I've had a lot less time to read because of school and two jobs, and I have a girlfriend. It takes up a lot of time to do all of that. There are some people who do not like it, purists who prefer the traditional novel. But the main thing and differences in social interaction is that people, like with the iPad, are more likely to look down and not pay attention to what they're doing. There's more distractions while you drive. There's more distractions when you are you have a Kindle to play on or iPad where you can go on and play games. And that affects people by talking less to the people around them, but also allows you to talk to people more, as I said earlier. Some of the conflict effects are the fact that the ebook devices, like the Kindle, have caused a lot of rifts between authors and publishers and different copyright laws that the Supreme Court has had to rule on to protect authors and to also make sure that's fair for publishers. And the New York Times versus Tanzanini, they ruled that the reuse of freelancers' articles in a digital form is not authorized by the Copyright Act. And the fact that most publishers let you have uh, authors that have film rights which means that they have to buy it from you to make a film based off of your work. And if they did that without, if they made something off your work without that, that would be illegal and be a copyright infringement. And you also have the fact that you have the digital book of it is the author's property. You cannot take the author's work and make it an ebook without it being a part of the contract. As for personal relationships and human behavior, most people see the Kindle as an advancement of technology. And so socially, you can use it to connect with people on the internet. And you can interact with the people around you while you're playing the game. Like my nephews, for example, they play the game and they play it together. They'll watch each other play the games on Kindles and iPads. And they use that as a social experience, social thing to do, especially on rainy days when they can't go outside. Helps keep them out of trouble if they play the games for a few hours just to get them to have some fun to do and keep them working as a team. With what Wagner mentioned, the conflicts you get are that the main issue consumers would have with the Kindle device would be things that they can that are not advanced enough or if it does not work as it says it should. And when that happens, you get the next model tries to improve on what that says. And usually there's another new complaint or something that just didn't work well or the way it, the product looked didn't look right and that goes into the next version of the Kindle and helps shape the future of the Kindle. This way, social, the Amazon Kindle is socially constructed in that if people didn't react to it and have new demands, which one of the things to remember about why people have new demands is that Facebook became more popular since 2007 and that iPads became more popular and that interacting with people further away has become more of a possibility and technology continues to improve and that means that people are interacting differently and that they have social media, which really affects how people communicate, which affects what people want with the Kindle. The difference is the Kindle has better things for eBooks. But the fact that it has the same features as the iPad, where you can go on the internet and connect with people and play games, helps get, give a competitive leveling. It also gives Amazon that competitive advantage because they've built this technology specifically that way. The Amazon Kindle is socially constructed in the way that it has been, and evolved greatly from its original design to now, and it has sh shifted, like the iPad, to be more interactive as we have as we desire.